name's Seb, or Sebastian, or Sebo, and I welcome you to the first episode of Circuits and Sounds. So who am I? And just what is this massive box all about? So I'm an electronic engineering student, living in a place called Bendigo, smack bang in the middle of Victoria, where they first found gold in Australia. And about two years ago, I bought this book. Make Analog Synthesizers by Ray Wilson. But unfortunately it didn't get read for a long time and sat on my shelf gathering dust. It wasn't until about six months ago when I discovered this guy. Sam from Look Mum No Computer, who really inspired me to have a crack at making my own synth. So six months ago when I picked up this book, I was looking inside and the circuitry for the noise toaster, which is the synth features on the front, it seemed very difficult to build and it seemed pretty full on for a first synth project. But I was having a flick through and I was talking about another one called the Alien Screamer and it seemed a lot simpler. So I decided to build that and over about the course of 30 minutes I pretty much had a functioning little noise machine. And it was pretty fun, but it got boring pretty quick and it was pretty limited in what it could do. So I thought, well, it's time to find a Mac noise toaster. And I think it probably spanned over about three breadboards. It was pretty big, but it worked and it sounded great. But the next question was, well, what if I want to make something more permanent? And that's when I stumbled across Sam's website where he could show you how easy it was to make the box. So I decided to make a more permanent version of every single module that was featured inside the noise toaster and then scale it up to the larger Cosmo format, meaning that they are 200mm high, and either 50mm wide, 100mm wide, or 200mm wide. The jacks are also 6.35mm, which means they pretty much accept a guitar cable, and just plug straight in, which is double the size of the Eurorack standard, which takes the 3.5mm cables, like an AUX, and that doesn't fit. I think having the modules at this size, with these size jacks, makes a lot more sense because you can see just exactly where the signals are coursing around the machine. Whereas the Euro rack is very small, it's very compact, and it can be difficult to see just exactly what's going on with a million cables going everywhere. So what is this channel going to be all about? Well, I'm going to be showing you just what every single one of these modules is and how it works behind the box. I'm also going to be assuming that you have a basic knowledge of electronics and operational amplifiers. Or else I might just get a bit confusing, but trust me, I'll do my best to keep it as simple as possible. At the moment, the synth basically functions as a kind of fancy sound effects machine. But my end goal is to be able to create enough modules that I can have the synth make its own generative music where it kind of creates its own melodies and rhythms completely and randomly on the fly. But it's going to be quite a while before I get to that point. So I hope you'll join me in the journey. There was also quite a few words in the synth world that sound very similar. Module, modular, modulation. But what exactly does it all mean? Well, I got this dictionary here. The completely new edition, which is from 1991. I'm sure it'll be fine. Module, a standard self-contained unit or item such as an assembly of electronic components or a standardized piece of furniture that can be used in combination with other units. List of suck as furniture, but it does have a lot of electronic components behind it. So every single one of these panels is a different module and it's called a modular synthesizer because every single part that is used to make the sound is broken out into a different module. And right above, we've got modulate to change the tone, pitch or volume of one's voice or to adjust or regulate the degree of. Well, basically, modulation is the act of, instead of me turning a knob, I use a voltage from another part to move that knob for me. And that's where we come to the concept of Control voltage. So what is control voltage? Well, it's basically just a signal that controls something. It's not that hard. And then we come to the word synthesizer, or to synthesize. What does that mean? Let's keep looking. 
Here we go. Synthesize. To combine objects or ideas into a complex whole. And then right below it. Synthesizer. A keyboard instrument in which speech, music, or other sounds are produced electronically. Well, that's exactly what this is. It produces sounds electronically. So in summary, we use a modular synthesizer to create sounds or music with the different modules that we have available. We have an oscillator where we can create a tone, a filter where we can shape the sound of that tone, or a voltage controlled amplifier where we can adjust the volume of that tone. But the key difference between a synthesizer and say a keyboard or an organ is that almost every module's parameter can be voltage controlled. So we can move the cutoff frequency of the filter using the low frequency oscillator, or we can adjust the volume of the tone using the envelope generator. So before we start getting into the real nitty gritty of every single module and how it works, let's take a look at what I call the kind of boring but still kind of fun stuff, such as the box itself and just where all the power is coming from to power all these modules. So the box is built to Sam's Cosmo format, meaning that it's 400mm high and 800mm wide. But what I really want to show you is what's going on behind the box. But that means I'm going to have to take this all down and turn it all around and you'll see. So as you can see at the back here, what I've done is I've put some hinges at the bottom and some bolt locks at the top. So that we can easily open it up and see just what's inside. And it is a beast back here. There is a lot going on. We'll take a close up. Alright, so we've got a nice big close up at the back of the box here. As you can see, there was a lot to take in. There was a lot of wires and cables and circuits just going everywhere. But basically, what is happening is that over on this side, we have power coming in from the wall which is going into a little power supply and providing 12 volts. It is also connected over to another power supply, doing the exact same thing. But that power is then distributed to these two different sets of blue strips, known as the power bus boards. And that is how all of the modules are getting their power. But just how exactly is the power from the wall getting converted into 12 volts, and just what's going on with these power supplies, and how, it's, how is it all being distributed? Well, let's quickly cut to that point. So as you can see, I've drawn this nice little diagram what we have is the wall adapter connected to the wall through the mains. There was a big long wire connecting into our two power supplies. The power supplies are then connected to the two sets of bus boards, which then distribute the power to the different modules throughout the synth. But what exactly is happening inside this wall adapter? We have our 240 volt AC signal that is then stepped down to a 12 volt AC signal. This 12 volt AC signal is then taken to the power supplies where it converts it into a DC signal. So we get our plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts, 0 volts or ground, and our minus 12 volts, otherwise known as the Euro rack power standard. Let's just explain how the power in this synthesizer is a little bit different compared to the normal Euro rack standard, and more specifically how the operational amplifiers in almost all of the modules are getting their power. All right, so first things first, we're gonna to have to get rid of my lovely drawing. Goodbye. So what I'm gonna draw is a symbol for the op amp. We've got our two inputs, no output, negative, positive inputs, and our power. And normally what happens with operational amplifiers is they work on a dual power supply, meaning that they need both positive 12 volts, and then negative 12 volts for it to be able to pass an AC signal, an amplifier, or filter it, whatever kind of function the operational amplifier is being used in. But in this synthesizer, it's a little bit different. When I was playing around with the noise toaster modules, the first thing I noticed is that it only runs on a 9 volt battery, meaning that it's a single rail power supply. 
not a dual rail like an operational amplifier would normally require. But what we do is we employ what is known as a biasing trick, where we can force the operational amplifier to work instead of with negative 12 volt, we can just have it connect directly to ground at zero volt. But the problem is we then need to be able to create what is known as a virtual ground so that the AC signal can still travel through. So what I'm going to draw here is a couple of the AC signals just to try and explain a bit more what I'm talking about. So just imagine we've got a nice big sine wave. Now to be able to pass it through the op amp, instead of having at the bottom here negative 12 and then at the top here positive 12 and then of course any other value in between. But when we then change this to ground, we need to be able to say what is the virtual ground for the signal that we are trying to pass through the operational amplifier. So to be able to do that we need to be able to create a midpoint which is what I've drawn here. And the midpoint between ground and positive 12 is just 6 volts. So along here, it is now considered our virtual ground, and our actual ground at zero volts is what replaces the minus 12 volts. So this is what allows us to be able to pass signals through the operational amplifiers with only a positive or single rail power supply. So normally to pass a signal through an op amp, we just take it through one of the inputs. So let's imagine we take our sine wave through our inverting input, and it comes out of our output. And then normally what we do with the non-inverting input is, is we just directly connect that to ground as well. Because we want to be able to pass a signal that goes between 0 volts and 12 volts, we need to bias this non-inverting input to half supply at 6 volts. So how do we do that? What we do is we just we take a resistor divider between ground and positive 12 volts. And it's important that both of these resistors are matched exactly the same. In this case, a lot of the resistors are just using 4.7Ks to be able to create a half supply bias. So that is how we are creating an almost virtual dual power supply, just with a single power supply. It just means that every single module that I create, wherever there is a ground connection, I then need to connect it to the virtual ground connection and any negative 12 volt connection then needs to go to the actual ground connection at zero volts. It's a little bit of a workaround, but it's just the way it was designed originally. Because I'm following the schematics from the noise toaster, which are based off the single rail power supply, to be able to interface any other kind of module that I discover, I then need to be able to bias the op amps or any other kind of circuitry within that module to the half supply therefore allowing it to pass signals or create signals in the way that we expect it to. So most Eurobrac or Cosmo modules or music from outer space modules run on that dual supply. But because I'm using only the single power supply where every single module is biased to the half supply, it means that I can't interface any professionally manufactured modules, which has its pros and cons. I mean, there was heaps of cool things out there that I'd love to be able to put in the box, but because it can't interface it, it means I'd have to play around the power supply and the biasing of every single other module. But the pro to that is, it forces me to learn how every single module works behind the panel and the circuitry involved in it. And because I'm an electronic engineering student, that's what I'm interested in. I want to know what's going on behind every single one of these panels, and that was my goal, is to be able to create them. I just want to quickly show you something that I think is pretty cool. Let me just quickly turn off all the lights. I mean, I think it just looks absolutely magnificent from the back. There's so many lights going on here. But the one thing I wanted to point out in particular is just this little white glow in the middle here. What's happening is that from the power supply, there's two little wires snaking up the side and up to the top, and there was three little white LEDs just blue tacked at the top there, just providing a little bit of light. Just in case one day it does get to the point where I can take it to gigs making some music, and hopefully not, but something goes wrong, and I've got a bit of light just to be able to see what's happened. So I think I might leave this episode where it's at for today. 
But join me next time in part two, where we'll finally start have a look at just what every single one of these modules is, and what its purpose serves in creating sounds or music. See you later.